You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. At the beginning of January, Phil Jones was named in Manchester United's starting lineup against Wolverhampton Wanderers, making his first appearance in 712 days. The last time that Jones had been seen on a football pitch was all the way back in January 2020, in an FA Cup game against Tranmere. The spread of COVID-19 was still two months from being declared a pandemic, and nobody had heard of the term social distancing. Two years on, Phil Jones was back to write the latest chapter of a very strange career, 11 years after joining Manchester United. Back in 2011, Jones was expected to have a huge future. Born in Preston, he joined Blackburn Rovers when he was 10 years old and grew up within their academy, eventually making his Premier League debut in 2009. Very few were unimpressed. Jones was nominally a centre-half, but capable of also playing in midfield. He was perhaps a little short for a central defender, but he combined good technical ability with a strong physique, and to most, he looked every inch a star, including to Alex Ferguson. Because by 2011, Rio Ferdinand and Nemanja Matic were both in their 30s, and Ferguson was looking for their replacements. It's of course a measure of Jones's stock at the time that Ferguson's interest in him was so automatic. As well as having been born and raised in Lancashire and developing his football reputation on Manchester United's doorstop, Jones was considered one of the coming talents in English football. Of course United wanted him, and of course they would happily pay the £16.5 million required to release him from his Blackburn contract. That same summer, Barcelona paid £33 million for Udinese's 22-year-old Alexis Sanchez and a further £34 million on Cesc Fabregas, while Manchester City spent a combined £62 million on Semir Nasri and Sergio Aguero. United had got a good deal. Jones would be heavily involved in his first season, the year in which United lost the title to Aguero's famous last-minute goal. But he and they would be champions 12 months later, it was Alex Ferguson's final triumph, and despite Jones' season being interrupted by injury, his manager would offer a ringing endorsement on his way to retirement. Arguably the way he is looking, he could be our best ever player, Ferguson said. I think Jones may be one of the best players we've ever had, no matter where we play him. Well, Manchester United's best player ever, that is an illustrious list. And while Ferguson wasn't comparing Jones to George Best, Dennis Law or Bobby Charlton, it would be a comparison to another United legend that would haunt him, Duncan Edwards. Now, Duncan Edwards isn't just a United great. He's a semi-mythical figure from the club's past. Remembered as bigger, stronger and better than any player of his generation, a complete near-perfect footballer, he sadly died at the age of just 21 from injuries sustained in the Munich air disaster. Edwards is the Busby babe, and according to Paddy Crerand, Bobby Charlton was reminded of his former teammate by Phil Jones. And by a quirk of unhelpful fate, Jones was also born on the 21st of February, the day in 1958 when Edwards passed away. Years later, he recalled being unfazed by the comparison and only recognising the pressure that came with it as he got older. When I was younger, I used to take a lot of things for granted, he told the Manchester Evening News in 2019. You hear that, and it's great at the time, but you don't dwell on it. You don't look back on it. Praise for Jones didn't just come from inside Manchester United, either. A few months after his move from Blackburn, the website In Bed With Maradona included the then 20-year-old Jones on their annual list of the top 100 young players in the world, writing, Quite simply, Phil Jones could be the best England player of his generation. He has the perfect stage and the perfect manager to get the very best out of him. Before adding a very prescient note of caution, all that's required is complete avoidance of the treatment room. And of course, that would not happen. Even by that stage of his career, Jones had been blighted by knee, ankle and back problems. And while he seemed on the right path by the end of the 2013-14 season, taking part in 26 Premier League games, he would never reach that total again. The list of injuries was devastating. Ankle and shin problems in 2014-15, ankle sprains and injuries which cost him 22 games of the following season and a vein narrowing condition which prevented him from playing another 10. Knee and toe injuries would keep him sidelined for over four months of the following season and the year after that was ruined by hamstring problems. 
Even before suffering the knee injury that would cause him his most recent and longest time away from the game, Jones was battling a fragile body and chronic lack of continuity. Between 2011 and 2021, he averaged just 16.5 Premier League games a season, and inevitably his form suffered. Over time, the perception of who Phil Jones was began to change from prospect to punchline. Newspapers and websites had started to treat the facial expressions that he made while defending as events of their own. And as Manchester United collectively suffered through the rest of the decade, Jones was an easy figure of fun and an obvious scapegoat. He made mistakes on the pitch and sometimes off it. In 2016, a social media post from his account commemorating the 58th anniversary of the Munich disaster appeared with his branding on it. It was seriously misjudged and quite understandably drew heavy criticism. But perhaps nothing described the relationship with supporters better than a story from 2019, when it was reported by The Athletic's Daniel Taylor that Jones had signed a new contract but declined the opportunity to have a testimonial to mark his 10 years at the club. Apart from my mum and dad, he apparently said to explain the decision, who else would turn up? It's a very sad reflection on his time at the club, and particularly because his inability to match expectations was determined by so many injuries. But, fit at last, and still with 18 months left to run on that contract, perhaps there's a happier ending to his story. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is where the Ralph Rangnick to Manchester United story broke, where a team of journalists have provided unrivalled coverage of Newcastle United's new ownership and where dedicated writers cover every Premier League team no matter their place in the table. And you can try it free now for 30 days.